Hello and welcome to the show. My name's Relvet. This is Do All The Things. For the second time this month, I seem to find myself repairing a vacuum cleaner. Except this time, a friend asked me if I could fix their shark rocket that has like a completely blown out spinner. And I found a replacement part on Amazon, so let's uh, see if we can hammer it in there. Some of y'all be looking for a how-to want me to skip the TLDR. In that case, we know we can press this button here and that part pops right off, which make it a lot easier to fix on. So what do we have here? This guy, and in this particular situation, hair and uh, carpet fabric got jammed up so bad in here that it's actually started melting plastic and it fused the hair and the plastic together. It's the strangest thing I had seen in a vacuum in a long time. And this particular guy, I've already had it apart to diagnose it. And we got rather lucky because we ordered this part from Amazon, Scionlan, vacuum cleaner, brush roll compatible with Shark Rocket, blah, blah, blah. All right. Right there, $25 here in Canada, which was a sweet friggin' deal because, you know, we tried finding other parts and some OEM components. Would have cost us like, more like $100. And, well, you could buy a new machine for 150 or something like that. So that part pops off. You probably already saw me do it. One, two, three screws to the unlock position. Don't force them. This pops off. I freed up these guys too by simply like kind of poking hard on them from the other side till they popped out. Got the crap out of them. Poke them back in. Not the easiest process. I have some skills that not necessarily everybody watching this might. This thing needs just a little bit more tools you'll need to start off with. I have a 1 8 punch. No, a 3 32nd punch. You'll see why in a bit. Here we have a Torx driver. Mine says T15 or is it T1.5 by four inches? Yes, T15. Now uh, the screws on this are security screws, which means they got this little pip in the middle. So you need a bit or a driver that has the hole in the middle. Now for a majority of these screws, you kind of get lucky because I found that they had just enough bite, even with that little pip in there, that I could undo them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these in particular, they look about half inch screws that we have to take out. And while you're taking them out, be sure to check the length of them. One of them is longer than the other. Once you find that one that's longer, label that hole. You wanna make sure. These screws are all pretty much the same, except for this one here. At least that's where I got it. That's where I thought that one went, I could be wrong. So pay attention when you take yours apart. But that one still has the security pip on it. And, oh, this one's being a trickery. I'll use my special bit to get it out. See, that one's longer. And one of the reasons why I'm using that 332nd punch, I'm taking a scrap sacrificial piece of two by four. I'm gonna drill a hole in it at least one eighth. I'm gonna screw the screw into it. And I'm gonna take the punch and the hammer. I'm gonna give it a few bangs like that. And you're gonna notice my plain driver that doesn't have the security hole. I have no problem gripping on this screw now because what I did with that punch is I hammered down and I flattened that security pip. So now these are all normal torque screws. So if you don't have the special bit and can manage to finagle them out, if you can have a punch and a hammer, you can pa -pa, do that and then it's not a problem anymore. Meanwhile, we got two screws here that are smaller and unfortunately the 332nd punch won't do that trick. So if you don't have all these fancy tools and you're ordering from scratch just get the security bits or a security screwdriver because unfortunately a bit arrangement like this won't get to the bottom of most of these holes those particular screws are using a t10 t10h so after that these guys kind of pop out they might be a bit tight to pop out at first but they just are kind of swaged in there with these uh serrations let's give them a firm pull they'll pop right out assuming we got all the screws out the next trick is to kind of you know leverage this assembly out it mostly wants to come apart except there's some hang-ups here this is the part of the game i didn't quite master i just started pulling on this but actually from the top like this, right? I'm trying to remember how I did this from the last time. And now she's starting to get hung up on the clips. There's clips along the front here. There seems to be one there. And it's tricky because that little ridge you see there is not where you have to pry. It's kind of in between. See right there like that? 
Try to catch that edge, bring it around. There we go. It should be released now. So that's the hardest part of the process, honestly, prying that thing out. Now we have a, a little wire here. So as you're prying this out, don't yank hard. It just unclips, so that's okay. Uh, here we see some attempts I made to fix it. Um, yeah, that, that's what's left of the roller's inner bearing. Now we have a belt assembly here. Slip that off. Getting this piece out is one of the next challenges. We have a hole here. You gotta find a little screw with a point on it, like a wood screw or something. I'm gonna try using one of these smaller screws that I got out of these holes. Now, assuming you're completely replacing this part, you don't have to worry about damaging this, really. And even if you are reusing the same part, you can't damage it too much by driving a screw into there. But by driving a screw into there, it's going to give you something to leverage against. Now, busting out another one of my specialty tools, I do have a mini pry bar, and I can kind of yank on it like that. So look at that. abs of frickin' lootly chowdered. She's a no-go, bud. He's done. So now let's check this out. We'll do a little bit of an unbagging here. Unboxing the part from Amazon. X039WVDBC. Solian. Scionland. Scionland. So it um, kind of agrees. Do they give us a part number here? They have an ASIN, an ASIN. No, they don't really say the specific part number here. But I do believe if we searched for this ASIN number, which appears to be B0B38G7XGY, pop that into the Amazon search and it's gonna come up first bang. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, I guess it's lighter. This one's heavier. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not sure. Oh, you got a nice bearing out of the deal. If you can pull that off, repurpose it for something else. Oh, fresh roller, buds. Can't go wrong. Just have these uh, little end pieces that slip off a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Okay. And we have, for future reference, it comes with a little brushy brush. And it looks like this guy with a little, uh, little sharp, sharp cutting bit. It's gonna allow us to pick out future debris. Now you might want to take this opportunity to clean up the rest of the inside of this. And we're gonna, hopefully, the encasement here isn't too damaged. No, that looks like it's gonna be fine. These two pieces appear to be identical, so just slot that in there. Oh, hold on. We forgot to put in the crystals. Don't forget the belt. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's not gonna be too shab. Fits right on there, buds. That's just the belt. Then our belt, we could just kind of get around the, uh, Oh, a little tighter, tighter. Is this uh, is this sprocket on here a bit bigger? Ultimately, it's gone back on. Oh, look at that, gates. Frick, that guy's got his fingers in every pie, I tell you what. God forbid you have hair building up in your motor. You might wanna check that out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, it's a good thing we're getting at this. <sighs> now we need to uh, engage in some inception. When you vacuum clean a vacuum cleaner, you become a vacuum cleaner. This is where having old toothbrushes come in handy. Right, there shouldn't be much more to it than that. Uh, minding this thing, it only goes in one way. You're gonna see the clip side here on the same clip side here. So clip the two clip sides together, top down, the fun part. Like, um, you know, it's gotta kinda get these bearing bits. There we go. Make sure they're firmly pushed in, and then the plastic cover should slip right over it. It goes on easier than it came off, buds. So now I have done that modification to every one of these screws. They're just gonna they're just gonna shoot right back in here. Remember the long screw, which I believe goes here, but I'm not entirely sure because maybe if I had a thought to check what is screwing into once I when I had this thing open, uh, I'd be able to confirm that. All right, I got all the major screws back into place. These wheelie bits just kind of push pin into here. Oh, why is this one tight? Oh, this might need a little cleaning here. Remember, take this opportunity to clean things up where you see necessary. Oh yeah, that's much nicer now. Now it might not go in smoothly first try. It's because those serrations got to fit into like maybe the existing cuts they made in the plastic. Oh, this clean one spins nicer than this one. I gotta double check this one before I button it up. Things like this shouldn't really need lubricant. They're not working hard enough. I mean, these specific parts. I don't know about the rest of the vacuum. Oh yeah, way nicer. Once we got the wheels back in place, we make sure to uh, put these screws back in. 
Now I just pop this pupper back into place. There's a uh, little, little teeth here that dig into that, 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 that spot. And then just snaps down. Adjust these to the locked position, which is just like a quarter turn, bud. Quarter turn till you hear the, the snap, but not again, we're not forcing it. And then you might want to quickly uh, inspect on these electrical contacts here because they could get a bit dirty. I have special electrical contact cleaner that I, I did put in there. And then I kind of, you know, jammed paper towel in there and, you know, just take a peek. This thing should be good to go now. Let's test on it. Yeah, but she's spinning smooth now, and it's funny, uh, those fresh, fresh, firm butt brushes, they feel a lot more aggressive than this thing does. Might need some break-in time, but not really. Just go ahead and use it and enjoy. So I hope uh, those of you out there who were looking to fix one of these found this useful. And for my regular subscribers who probably don't care to see me fi fix vacuums, it's like, well, bud, I do all the things, man. I don't know what to tell you. This is what came across my desk today, buds. Stay tuned to find out what I do next. Man, that's one of the shortest videos ever. I might be able to, yeah.